Hello guys and welcome back to another Total War skill point guide video for Warhammer 3 on Immortal Empires. Uh, today we'll be going over the Our Sisters of Twilight. Uh, apologize about not getting war. this out yesterday, but uh, um, if you guys haven't seen my post, I accidentally um, recorded the video without any audio on. Um, but anyway, uh, now with the Sisters of Twilight, um, it's kind of like the Melee Lord um, skill point guides that I've done in the past here on the channel. Except this time it's just kind of missile based because she does have the flying mount and they are a missile based um, so bored. lord. So but um, but where, what you really end up doing in my opinion is you do the blue line and get her special skills and then either have to decide whether or not to go down the red line for her units depending on what you want or just make them better fighters personally. Um, but in terms of the blue line here getting the skill point spending started obviously you have to grab the ever reaching tendrils and then personally I grab the obscuring canopy just for the extra missile strength when we ambush and also increase the ambush success chance the other ones just aren't that big of a priority um, the control or the corruption rather in the local province and growth and control in our local province she's just not going to be standing around like just doing nothing in provinces um, especially like in any wood elf campaign your main legendary lord is going to be the one like hopping between the forest getting the forest health up and moving early on and so it's really just not um useful in my opinion just to put points into local province skill points because they're not going to be standing still doing nothing um, so usually i just put one point then into the wonders of the forest just so we can unlock the rest of the skill tree and finishing out the skill of the blue line here now you, you used to in warhammer 2 you would go down quartermaster for the upkeep cost reduction but in warhammer 3 they make a little bit more money because of the supply line penalty being significantly reduced and their buildings also make a little more money overall um, so i actually grab the swift fingers and the uh, casualty replenishment rate and then the home amongst the bows that one's good just for campaign movement range a little bit of upkeep cost reduction a little bit of casualty replenishment is always good but then i usually like to grab this for the magic item drop chance and also the chance of stealing a magic item from the enemy just because lightning strike i don't think i've ever used lightning strike once in a warhammer 3 um, campaign so far um, it's just not it, it, it's just not as useful as it used to be frankly in my opinion um, back in Warhammer 2 when you only had to spend one point into it that was fine but for most lords that have a buffier skill tree um, where you really have to pick and choose skill points having to waste three points in lightning strike nowadays is just not worth it in my opinion um, there, are, there are just vastly m better ways to um, avoid a enemy's reinforcements other than wasting points into lightning strike um, but anyway um, while you're now while you're leveling up her and going through the blue line um, whenever the inseverable option comes up I do recommend get grabbing the um, special skill points first because they are some pretty good ones in here um, the Queen's Emissary is the least important one in my opinion. Grabbing the extra campaign movement range and replenishment rate is good. Um, Arahan's Reckoning is good for the extra additional force health when fighting battles in force in their heathlands and also post battle loot and with success chance. And then the Masters of the Ares is good for flying units if you end up going with a Hawk Rider stack or just um, forest dragons. Um, really, really good um, way to make them a little cheaper and also make them a little sturdier in uh, in battles. And then with her faction, th they do have the Volley of the Kronos ability for the Hawk Riders, as well as the Dragon Breath attack. So being able to increase the number of uses for them and providing ward save for the army is really good. But then I definitely do come back and grab the Queen's Emissaries as well, just to make sure the relations with the High Elves uh, maintain and stay positive, because you will make quite a bit of money via growth. In, in your campaign and so making sure the high elves like you um, as well as other wood elves like you will also become very handy as well um, as soon as the challenge to death also becomes available highly recommend grabbing that it's a really good ability gets you more favor that way you're able to get more items now I'm not going to go through the various um, items that you can get with her um, just because there's no like perfect one to do in my opinion it's all really going to come down to the player individually on what they value on what they want to go with um, but in general getting the Serene challenge today is just good that way you can just get to tier 3 with all of these as soon as possible so really really good ability there um, 
Now, in terms of buffing her first or her army first, I usually go with her army. Um, she's all like they're already. I keep saying she, but it's a pair. They're already like really powerful on their mount, um, and once you start getting more items, that'll help you as well. Um, but yeah, going down there like melee slash missile line first is just not that important in my opinion. And so, what I usually end up getting, now the red line all depends on what you want to recruit. Personally, I usually go with the missiles first and the wings of the forest. Um, I don't really do the hawk rider spam, it just happens to be the one that she gets with dragons because I usually actually end up getting dragons with her. And then just finishing out, I get nature's, nature's quiver as well as the forest roar and then the stand your ground ability. Now even though we have all of those points spent in the red line and the blue line we still have 20 points to spend so it's not like you're running low once you're putting two points into the um, final parts of the red line here but then after that I also grab the reign of spines and the speed of the hunter just for speed because again I go with some missile units so giving them more speed is always good and also reducing the reload time reduction by another 8% is pretty handy there now in terms of the how the forest side of sight beyond sight and the possessed by the trickster god um, it, it's kind of up to you. I usually save those for last just because with her being on a flying mount She's not gonna really be in one area at a time. So we'll touch on that here in a little bit um, But then after this I do go down her or their um, Like individual skill line just make them tank here just in case you end up putting her them on the dragon Just will give them more um, melee stats and missile um, Stats as well because their missile attack is very powerful um, now after this I do put points into mentor as well and as you see we have one point remaining and in terms of um, Quickly coming back to these I usually do the possessed by the trickster god for the extra um, If it stays and hovers over here the melee defense plus 10 um, The sight beyond sight if that was armor piercing damage that would be good but increasing base missile damage doesn't really do a whole, whole lot for you because there are various ways that a unit can block that whether it's armor a shield um, increasing the armor via spells there, there are numerous ways where the enemy can um, basically negate that extra missile base damage um, so I just don't really like that plus she's gonna be like flying or, or they're gonna be flying around like toying with the enemy and they're not gonna be hanging around your units very much and so then you're just never gonna like be able to utilize um, this ability that often where if you end up getting dragons or um, hawk riders and they get into melee being around them with the extra plus 10 melee defense can make a heck of a difference when they go into combat there. Um, but that is the skill guide for the Sisters of Twilight. Let me know down in the comments Night what you guys think day. of the video and how you guys level them up. And uh, don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the content. And I will see you guys again soon on the next live stream or skill guide video that I release on the channel. So until then, have a good one guys and I will see you later. Bye.